morning guys, welcome to the channel. My name's CJ and today you join me at Cadwell Park where we are taking a look at Jack's track setup M3. First time he's been to this track and typically this morning it was absolutely freezing, skidding everywhere all over the car park. So it's gonna be a funny one. <laughs> The E92 M3 was powered by BMW's S65 V8 engine. This developed 414 brake horsepower with torque peaking at 295 pound-feet. The car screamed all the way to a red line of 8,300 RPM. The car was the first BMW to introduce the seven-speed dual-clutch transmission named the MDCT. The official 0-60 time was 4.6 seconds, 0.2 seconds quicker than the manual variant. The coupe was a remarkably light car for the size, 1,580 kg. The carbon roof alone saved 10 kilograms in comparison to the E90 sedan's roof. Over 40,000 E92 M3s were sold worldwide, but what immediately makes Jack's car special is the color choice. Japan Red was a paid extra and only 37 exist, and Jack's car, I think, really suits this color. The engine is stock along with the exhaust that keeps the sound perfectly safe within noise limits for track. Jack's car isn't just about raw power, lots of thought has gone into ensuring the car can brake and carry speed through corners the best it can. Jack's M3 has BC racing coilovers with adjustable top mounts. Having had a full geo set up by Gary at APT in Norwich, we was ready for the track. The car features an AP Racing Pro 5000R brake kit, the exact same setup that the BTCC M3s use. Hell braided brake lines with a Mumbre Motorsport brake cooling kit sitting in the front vents you see there. GT4 carbon splitter completes the front end. GTS carbon spoiler really lets you know that this car is something different to the norm. The car was a competition pack car so featured the 19 inch wheels. So let's take it out, see what this thing can do. Pretty damp track today and to be fair in a rear wheel drive M3 I think that's going to be a lot of fun. So hopefully <laughs> we get some unintentional sideways action today. <laughs> Want to try and get as close to the action as I can so I'm just going to mix it up just trying to visit every corner on the track or as many as I can get to just to try and see this car going. Despite the rain the car was handed out Gappuccinos for free. seems like it's doing incredibly well but I think it's time for my go so we're gonna take a little go in the passenger seat to see what it's like on a bit of a damp wet track at Cadwell so see you on the inside I can't believe all the different elevations in there that's nice isn't it compared to Snetterton oh Snetterton's just compared to this really boring actually it is yeah yeah <laughs> is insane. That was being held up. <laughs> Yeah, 
Brakes are definitely by far my favourite mod so far. driven a manual I'd like to drive a manual and see what they uh, see what it's like compared to this sure um, some people have their preferences don't they but well um, I think it's just quite nice to have your hand on the steering wheel the whole time it is yeah to be honest that's, that's probably one of the big things I like about it you haven't got to take your when you first start to do well when I first started doing a few track days you kind of you get used to the car and the sound of the car so you know when the you kind of know what sort of revs you're at sure um, Obviously, just by listening to it and, and not having to take your eye off the road, and everything's just in reach of your little fingers, it's, it works out spot on. So, a little bit dirty now, guys. It's good to know that you actually do use it though. Oh, yeah. And it's not just. To be honest, yeah, I can't. Little trailer queen. Yeah, no, I, I, I couldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have bought the M3 if. I knew it wasn't going to be 90% of its life on like, track. I don't, I, barely, I, don't, I don't really use it for a week, it just sits in the garage and it's, um, yeah, it goes out on weekends, has its head kicked in, comes to places like this. How did you find going from like four wheel drive S3 to then just rear wheel driving this? Um, Is that your first rear wheel drive car? First rear wheel drive car, yeah, yeah. If you're um, going to do it, do it big? Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, the, the S3 was. The S3 was another piece of really. No matter where you were, you could just smash the throttle and you'd be Because that was really big power, wasn't it? That was 500 plus, wasn't it? Yeah, 560. That's disgusting. 560, yeah, that was, that was pretty quick. It's quick as recorded, 0 to 60 is 1.9 seconds. And the four wheel drive to the rear wheel drive, it was, I was going to do a few track days in the S3, but just using it as a normal car, didn't it? It was just it won what I wanted from a car. It was, set up for it was set up for drag racing, the previous owner built it for Santa Pod basically. I know they say anyone can drive in a straight line and there is a huge difference between a proper drag car trying to keep that straight and just something with 300 brake driving in a straight yeah, line. Yeah, definitely, yeah. If yeah. you know what I mean. What's the kind of future plans for the car? Next will be Recaro pole positions. Nice. It needs some seats. Um, they're comfy but they're not like the most like... They don't hug do they? No, they've got no. a little bit of lumbar support in them just to tighten up a little bit but... Yeah, they, they're just not. Just give it a little bit more of that racing feel as well, to be honest. Just, um, oh, I agree. Definitely, yeah, that. And I probably, I'm, I'm probably not going to run harnesses straight away. I'm just going to keep the seat belts. Um, Do they make like a harness bar for these that goes behind yeah, the seat? Yeah, you can get a harness bar. Yeah, Mumbro Motorsport, Paul Mumbro. He um, he yes. makes harness bars. Um, the Recaros will be the next purchase, and then after that will be what they call Club Sport spec half cage. He makes a half cage. That'd obviously just be like rear section. Yeah, it'll be rear seat delete. Um, he puts a nice Alcantara like rear seat delete in, pretty much. Um, mount fire extinguisher. I'm gonna have the cage painted in Japan, red, the same colour as the car. Yeah, you gotta do it. This felt mega on track as it was. Like, there wasn't really, it, there wasn't anything out there today that was particularly like giving you concern. It's been set up well, yeah. Gary, Gary set the GO up from, uh, from APT. And, yeah. I suppose I never drove it without the geo set up. <laughs> yeah. Like we said in the car, like when we were on the way around, there's so much more to a car than just power, power, power. Like how this is set up and how it handles on such a wet, greasy track. Like I was honestly amazed at like just how it stuck. Yeah. Like it was ridiculous. Like you didn't let off, like at all. And to be fair, credit to you, you're a good driver. <laughs> Back and out is not an option. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly.
that is us all done at Cadwell today. So hopefully you enjoyed this one. A little bit different for the channel rather than just like a road feature, actually something at a track. Something I absolutely love and enjoy. So thanks so much, Jack, for taking us around in your lovely M3.